I worked in a, a warehouse. You're on the same level as the forklift because a walkway would just be a taped, a green taped area. The 24th of March was my son's 13th birthday. So the night before I did what I usually do, which is doing his balloons, doing the banners. And then because Dave was on the night shift, he'd put the night off, whereas I didn't want to waste a holiday when Kieran would be at school anyway. I'd have spoke to Dave at like dinner time or whatever, just to make sure that he'd cleaned up, ready for Kieran's party that night. Half past three, I was just finishing off, and that's when um, the accident happened. I was on a uh, walkway by the container base, um, going from the end of shift nearly, I was going from one part of the warehouse which was an office to another part of the warehouse which was like a partitioned area because we had to do like a handover for the uh, night shift coming on and then the next thing I know what happens is um, a forklift reversed over my leg. I, I'm presuming that the guy was in a container bay and then he's I've walked across like that, he's come out, he's reversed. I've then turned, so I'm presuming I heard the beeps of the forklift reversing and I've turned like that and that's when he's gone over my leg. I was on the floor, I was screaming at him to get off. He didn't realise at that point that he had run a person over. So he's had to pull forward and as a result of that, uh, the injuries that I got was, they call it degloving. So basically, because he took it, the skin and fat that way, and then he had to drive back off me, um, the skin and fat was hanging at the back here. All of it had come, come away. My work colleagues, they pretended that I'd dislocated my knee. They took my glasses off me, and every time I tried to sit up, they'd make me lie back down at, a, at an angle so I couldn't see anything. And I think that had I gone into hospital knowing that I was going to lose my leg, I think I probably would have gone into a deep depression. Dave had nobody with him, you know, making sure that he's okay. And obviously he's the one that then had to ring my mum, my dad. Oh God, I'm getting upset now. I hate it when I talk about that. I don't care, you know, about the leg. It's my, it's my family. So they took the bandages off and stuff and it looked absolutely disgusting to the point that after that, I couldn't even have a bath by myself. I, I just felt that there was this disgusting thing attached to me that was part of me but wasn't, if you get what I mean. And I didn't want to be in a room by myself with that. The only way I can describe it is I called it Freddy Krueger. While I was in hospital, one of the things that I didn't like was pretty much as soon as I went in there, People were saying, stump this, amputee that, and, you, and you're like, calm down. You're not talking to me. You can't be talking to me. I'm not an amputee, you know, and it was straight in that this is, this is what you are. It's like, it's weird. It's like having to fill a form out and you tick one box, then all of a sudden they give you that same form and, and they're like saying to you, you're ticking the wrong box. You're not able-bodied anymore. You're now disabled. It was hard. When I was at home, um, you know, we had to join a gym so I could go and have a shower. You know, I'd got no facilities at home. My bed was in my front room, eating in the front room, sleeping in the front room. It never crossed my mind to, to ever commit suicide, but um, I did go through a dark, a dark period where I would say to my parents that I wish he'd have killed me.